Hi, this is Mike for FiberglassSite.com. This video is called How to Fiberglass a Plywood Deck. What we're going to show you today is how to fiberglass plywood or any wood to give it a permanent waterproof seal. This method can be used on the deck on your house, the roof over the deck on your house, the deck on your boat, even the entire roof of a houseboat. Anywhere where you want to waterproof wood with fiberglass to give it a permanent waterproof seal. We've taught this method to hundreds of homeowners who've had great success with, with it. And we've also taught it to home improvement contractors who have done it for their customers with great success. You don't have to memorize what I'm saying. Everything that I'm telling you is written out on our website in little baby steps under the heading fiberglassing decks. Here's a list of things that you will need. The first is polyester resin, and you need unwaxed polyester resin. When, later on, we'll explain why that's important. When you get the resin from fiberglasssite.com, it's unwaxed polyester resin. It comes with enough hardener, the measuring cups to measure out the hardener, and on back of the can is the mixing directions. Next, you'll need chop strand mat. You're going to use two ounce chop strand mat. You'll need laminating rollers and squeegees. Okay, you need various size paint rollers. You want them with a very thin nap and to be disposable. You need mixing buckets and you need a mixing attachment, a paint mixing attachment for your drill. You, you can mix it by hand, but it's much better to mix it with a mixing attachment for your drill. It saves time and you it gives you a better to cut mix. the mat. Either regular scissors or electric scissors. Depending on your deck, you may or may not need caulk and Bondo wood filler. We'll show you that later. When you're doing this, you want your skin to be completely covered. You should wear coveralls, gloves, and a respirator and eye protection. The very last step is to seal the deck. You can use either gel coat or boat deck paint. If you get the gel coat from us, it comes with a hardener, wax, and directions. We'll explain about right, the there, wax There are later. two ways to deal with the posts that come up through the deck. Um, the way I prefer is to just caulk around them, and when you do your primer coat, which we're going to show in a minute, just prime right up over the, the line of caulk. The second way that you can deal with the post is that you can, after you do the primer coat, you can cut individual strips of fiberglass and fiberglass three or four inches up the post on each side. You would, you would cut this piece, you would cut a piece like this, and you would go all the way around the post. This is really not necessary. Some people like to do it that way. I think that just caulking around the post and then fiberglassing right up to the caulk, right up over the caulk, is good enough. You need to caulk the gap where the deck meets the house and to, so that, uh, and then you're going to fiberglass right over that. So this is how you do it. One nice clean thing and smooth it out with your finger. Now, if you're not going to fiberglass up the, ha up the wall, you would use clear caulk to do this. You need to caulk around the post. Um, if you're going to fiberglass up the post, you can use any type of caulk. If you're just going to fiberglass up to the post the way we recommend, you would use clear caulk. I want to use white caulk so you can see what I'm doing. You just make a nice, put a nice heavy bead of caulk all the way around the post and then smooth it with your finger. This is why you should use clear caulk. So, but anyway, you get a good seal around the post, all the way around, and then fiberglass right up to it. If that. you have any gaps that are bigger than a dime, or any holes that you want to fill, you should do it with wood Filling putty. these holes is very simple. You use wood filler, and you fill the hole. It doesn't have to be perfect because once you put two ounce chop strand mat over it, you're not going to see it. You would fill any cracks the same now way. I'm going to mix the resin for the primer coat. Uh, the amount of hardener you use depends on the temperature outside. If you look at the back of the can of resin, it will tell you how much hardener to put in 
according to the temperature. It's in cc's or milliliters, and you should start with a small batch, like a quart, so you can see what your working time is. Then, once you know what your working time is, you can either increase the size of your batch or decrease the size okay, of your batch. The next batch. step is to prime the plywood, but before we get to that, there's a couple of things we have to talk about. First of all, you have to cover any area you don't want the resin to get onto. Um, use drop cloths or tape off any areas you don't want the resin to get onto. Um, once polyester resin gets onto something, it's very difficult to get it off. You should use acetone to clean up and of course always wear gloves when using acetone. The other things we need to talk about is temperature. It has to be at least 60 degrees outside and that means that the surface that you're working on has to be above 60 degrees also. If it was 40 degrees the night before and your surface is 40 degrees, it will suck the heat out of the resin and you will not get, it will not kick over and will not cure properly. So you have to wait until your surface, the air, and the resin that you're using, everything has to be above 60 degrees and below 90 degrees. If you get up above 90 degrees, the resin will kick over too quickly. You can always do it in very, very small batches if it gets very hot, but if it's 90 degrees and you're in the sun, it's probably going to kick over too quickly and you're going to have to wait until you get into the shade or something like that. Now that the primer layer is dry, we're going to lay down the two ounce chop strand mat. Um, as you see, I laid out this section. Um, the skirt is four inches long, so we're going to, we cut, we let the mat hang over just a little bit more than four inches. When we're finished, we can cut off the part that didn't fit perfectly. On the corner here, I cut off the excess so when we get this wet with resin, it's going to fit perfectly. Now we're going to do the next section of matting. We want it to overlap just about one inch, and we want to make sure that we're putting it back far enough that it will cover the area up the wall. It's always better to have a helper. Um, if, it's, if it's a little high like this, that's just fine. We can cut that clean roll this out and then we get it to go over the side and we're going to cut it just below the skirting Now for a very large deck, you can do, you don't have to lay out all the mat at once. If you're doing a deck that's 40 feet long, you can just do one section of the deck and then because it's unwaxed, the great thing about unwaxed polyester resin is you can let that dry and come back the next day and it's still going to be slightly tacky and you can do the next section. So now I just have to cut the section for here. We're just going to cut this in strips. I'm going to make a cut right here, so this will go down. See how nice that is? And then the, uh, the extra here, we're going to cut. We leave a little over because we can cut off the rest now of that off later. Now all the matting is laid out properly, so we're going to pour the resin in a strip. and. We're going to start moving around with the roller. Well, we saturated the two ounce mat over the entire uh, deck. As you can see, when the mat gets wet, it will go around the corners like it's supposed to. It did around the, you know, all of the corners. Um, back there where you see the white line, that's not an air bubble. That's the caulk that we put across there. Uh, that's why, well, it's not going to matter once we gel coat over it. So clear caulk white caulk. It doesn't matter because we're going to put a beautiful gel coat over it. So now we just leave this alone. Uh, we're going to leave it alone overnight and pick up tomorrow. And we're going to do uh, 
one kind of gel coat on this side and a different kind of gel coat on that side. Now so we'll see gel coat. We're going to do two layers of gel coat. In the first layer of gel coat, we are going to use just hardener, no wax. And we're also going to thin it down with acetone. We're going to thin it down about 10% because the first coat, you want it to be fairly thin. Then in the second coat, uh, before we add the hardener, we're going to add the wax additive. The wax additive is added two ounces per gallon, one ounce per half gallon, and one half ounce per quart. And what the wax additive causes the gel coat to harden to a very, very hard finish. That, but you only want wax in the very last layer of gel coat, not in, your, not in any of the polyester resin, not in the first layer of gel coat, you're only going to add wax into the final layer of gel coat. And of course, you never use any of the polyester resin or any gel coat without hardener. Never ever use gel coat or, hard, or now, polyester resin. What the deck should look hardener. like when you're finished. If you have any white spots, that means that that is a spot where the uh, chop strand mat did not get properly saturated. All you have to do is either sand those out or cut those out with a, a carpet knife and just take a little piece of the chop strand mat, saturate it with the resin, and put it on that spot. That's it. Um, if any white spots, cut them out, sand them out, put a patch of two ounce chop strand mat and polyester resin on it. Okay, let it dry. Now we're going to mix our first coat of the primer coat, the thin coat of gel coat. We're only going to use the hardener, no wax, and we're going to thin it down with 10% of acetone. Um, ten, uh, there's 128 ounces per gallon. The 10% would be 12.8. Uh, so for a gallon, you would use 12.8. For a half gallon, you would use about six or seven. For a quart, you're going to use about between about three and a half to four ounces of acetone. So we're going to put the acetone in. We're going to mix that at low speed. I'm going to do it down put on the, the ground. Hardener in, and we're going to mix that at low speed for a minute and a half to two minutes. Okay, we finished our primer coat. This is gel coat with hardener only, no wax, and we did thin it down 10% with acetone. Um, we're going to wait for this to dry until it's hard enough to walk on. Once it's, once it's dry enough to walk on, it's still going to be tacky, but once it's dry enough to walk on, we can do our second coat. All right, take a look at that. All right, what we did was, a lot of people ask us about colors. Um, we sell white gel coat, and the only color we recommend tinting it is gray. And what you do is you go to a boating supply store, and they have the different tints. And if you put black tint into white gel coat, you get the gray. So what we did, we separated the deck into two sides. We're gonna do one side in uh, the, the white and one side in the gray, just so you can see what it looks like. Uh, we've tried tinting other colors and it just only using black to go to gray is the only one that's ever been successful and that's the only one we recommend. So we've done the primer coat on the, on the entire deck and the primer coat is the thin down gel coat with the hardener in it only. Now comes the one and only time we're going to use the wax hardener. Uh, we're going to put the, the wax, you put two ounces per gallon, one ounce per half gallon, and one half ounce per quart. So we have one, half, one quart here. We're going to put in one half uh, ounce of wax. And what the wax does, the wax rises to the surface as the resin is curing and causes it to cure to a very, very hard finish. And we're going to also add it, of course, we're going to add wax to the gray gel coat as well. And of course, we're going to add hardener. But you add the wax, then the hardener, then put it on. This is the quart. Uh, this is our final coat. We didn't thin it down. We put wax in first, then hardener. We roll it on, and this is our final coat. We're going to do the white side first. Okay, so we finished the top coat on the white side. Um, 
As it's curing now, the wax is rising to the surface. The, ax, the wax will cut off the air to the resin. When the resin is, when the uh, gel coat is starved of air by the wax, it will cure to a very, very hard finish. Cut. Now. Okay, recall in the beginning that we did a caulk line around the post and up against the house before we did the primer coat. Then we did the primer coat over top of the caulk and we brought the two ounce chop strand mat over top the caulk. You can't, I mean, you might not be able to see it, but it is watertight now. You could hit this with a fire hose and water would not get in between that caulk. I believe that's the best way to go. That's it. Okay, this is the white gel coat that we mixed in the black tint to get to gray. Uh, of course, we put wax in here and hardener. And let's see how it looks. Okay, so we did the gray and the white, and you can really see the contrast. It's going to look great when it's finished. Um, I used a black tint designed for polyester resins and put it into the gel coat. Um, depending on whether you use a liquid tint or a paste tint, you're going to use a different amount. I used a paste, a concentrated paste tint, and I used a whole ounce in a quart. That's why we got this very dark gray. Um, so depend, you can get, at most boating supply stores, you can get the tint for polyester resin or gel coats. I never ever put tint in polyester resin, it looks terrible. You have to seal your deck with gel coat. And if you want to get a color on your deck, you're either going to have to use a tint, and I only recommend using black to get the gray. Um, the other option to, to seal the deck instead of using gel coat is boat deck paint. Every marine supply store has a paint section and in that paint section almost every marine supply store has boat deck paint. Boat deck paint already has a non-skid additive in it and it comes in a lot of different colors so that is another option for getting your non-skid surface or for getting to the color that you want. All right so we're finished. We did our second coat of gel coat with the wax in it. The wax rose to the surface and caused it to harden to a very hard finish. You can't believe how hard this is. This is going to last about 20 years. Um, we put black tint in the white gel coat on this side and we ended up with a very nice gray. Uh, you can use the black tint to get a light gray or a dark gray depending on how much you use. I wouldn't recommend trying to use any other color other than black to get the gray. I just don't think it would work. Um, you can buy j colored gel coats or you can get the boat deck paint that we talked about earlier if you want a non-skid surface. Now we use two ounce chop strand mat so the whole deck is textured um, which is good because that helps make it non-skid but there are spots on here there are high spots that if you walked on in your bare feet it wouldn't be good so you just take some hundred grit sandpaper wipe it like you're wiping down a table just a one quick wipe will get rid of those high spots and then you can walk on it we did it right here and it's nice and smooth here it's still rough and I wouldn't walk on that I just want to go over what we did very quickly and what our ingredients were, the three ingredients that we used were two ounce chop strand mat, unwaxed polyester resin, unwaxed gel coat. You use hardener and every, every time you mix your, re, your polyester resin, every time you mix your gel coat, you always use hardener. Never ever use these resins or gel coats without hardener. But, and the only time you use wax is in the very final coat of your gel coat. Um, you put the wax in, it rises to the surface, and you get that very, very hard finish. Uh, if you email the square footage of your deck to fiberglasssite.com, they will give you an estimate. Email, it, uh, email your, the square footage of your deck and your city and zip code, and they will do a workup for you. It's going to be between $2.75 and $3 a square foot, including the gel coat, delivery, everything.